Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Online Trader Central. We want to welcome each and every one of you to the presentation today. Your host, presenter, Melissa Armo from the Stockswish.com. Please put your hands together and welcome your host and presenter from the Stockswish.com. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much, Online Trader Central, for helping me and having me here. And welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called the Stockswish. And today I'm going to talk about one strategy to make money consistently. And I'm going to talk about three components that I think are really important for you to be a successful trader. So if, you, if you're trading now and you're doing a lot of different strategies or focusing on a lot of different things and you're not having the level of consistency, then think about the things I'm saying today because it might pull some things together for you to make sense to figure out why you're not profitable. If you've never traded before, and you're thinking about trading or doing it, specifically day trading, because that's what I'm gonna be talking about today, then you might want to think about the system that I'm gonna go over. And really the strategy that I trade is gaps. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today and I will also explain in more detail. If you would like to reach out to me, if you have more questions, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, in YouTube and you can call me at 929-3200-GAP if you have questions as well. So we're going to get right into it today. And, and I really think actually YouTube is probably the best place to go and follow me because of the fact that I put a lot of uh, plays of the days and market reviews and webinars on YouTube. If you want to go there, Kathy can put my information back in the room. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's get started. How do you achieve consistent profitable results? Number one, it's the thinking. Now, what do I mean by the thinking? Before I trade each day, before the open, in the pre-market, okay, before 9.30, the stock market opens at 9.30, I am thinking and deciding what it is that I want to do. If I don't see my system or strategy set up or any stock that meets my criteria in the thought process of the analyzing process of what I'm doing beforehand that I don't, don't do anything on the live day, I don't trade. So in other words, I have decided before 9.30 if I like something to trade or not. The next thing, if I find a trade, a stock that meets my criteria, that's gapping, and again, I'm going to go over what a gap is in a minute, then once the day opens at 9.30, I look for the stock and I watch the stock to, the stock to set up, and then I do it. And that's the doing part, taking the trade after it sets up on the open. And then number three is believing. And this is something that's very important too. And the reason that this is important is because if you don't believe or have what I call conviction in your strategy, it is gonna be extremely uh, difficult for you to be successful. And I found that many, many, many traders trade multiple different systems, use multiple different indicators and things, and they don't have the conviction. And that is one thing I have with my system and strategy, and I think it is extremely important. Now, I put in here, this is just going back the last six weeks of results. We're not going to go over every gap here, but I am taping this. And if you want to go back and look, you can see I like to focus on the short side. Now, one of the things that I think is important as well, if you want to do it and actually see the results, is to get good at one directional bias. So what I've done is to focus on the short side. Now that's not to say I occasionally don't go long, I do. I do occasionally look at a bullish gap and go long, but it's not that often. I, I really veer to looking to short, I'd say 90, 98% of the time, okay? Only if I don't have a good short will I go look at a long. So most of these trades were shorts, but you can see here, if you go through each week, this was week one, there was one loser in here, week two, there, there was a loser in here. Week three, there was not. And this one day, there was two trades. The other uh, periods in here, most of the days, I only do one trade. So again, the strategy, the system that I do focuses on one pick, meaning one stock pick per day, okay? Now, this is the next week, <clears throat> the fourth week. There was an option in here. Again, one loser. And then last week, uh, there was Monday was a holiday, and then today actually Target was a loser. But I called a put in this 
for the options letter because this actually did rate good as a short today. It did not work as a day trade in the morning. We're going to go over this as a loser today, but it is lower in the overall time frame picture. So you could be in an option trade in this. You could have bought a put. Okay. So all in all, if you look at the, all the trades for the last six weeks, it's about an 84% win ratio. You, you need to have a, a, a very, very narrow focus, I think, to have the consistency. And I always find it interesting when I talk to people and they're in trading rooms that are open from 9.30 to 4. My trading room is only open from 9.30 to 10.30, 11 o'clock, whenever we're done trading and I'm done teaching. I have a very strategic time of the day that I'm looking to do these trades. I'm looking for the focus that I will have to set up. And I don't call a lot of trades, as you can see. I don't call a lot. I don't do a lot. I don't think it's necessary. I think when you don't do that many trades, you have a higher chance for success because you won't have that many losses. And then the ones that work, you will keep the profits instead of trading it in the morning and making money and then trading in the afternoon and taking a loser and giving the money back that you make. Which, which isn't good, okay? That's never good for anyone. So it is important to keep the money that you make from the market. Now this was the first week that I have in there just showing you the profits from these trades. And this included one loser, which was Juniper. This was back the last week of January, okay? You can go back and look at the dates of these. Today, we're gonna go over today the gaps in the last few days, the current ones for February. But this was back the last week in January if you took an advanced risk, which is what we're going to look at today, which I trade with advanced risk, you could have made over six grand in one week. That is a lot of money. That's real money. It's real money. When I say real, I mean money that, that you can do something with, that you can pay your bills with or do something with, use it, do with this for a career, um, pay for a vacation, buy a car, whatever. Real money means not just, you know, 50 bucks a day. This was the week after that. First week of February it was. Last week of January, first week of February overlap. Again, loser in here, small winner, still a very profitable week, $5,000. So you can see with an advanced risk, and this is about a $1,200 risk, uh, which you can do right away after the class if you, if you have an account that you can take that kind of risk, but you don't have to. You could risk 500 bucks or 600 bucks, whatever you can afford depending on the size of your account, which you can talk to about. However, this is still real money, real, real money. So the idea of making, you know, 20 grand a month or over $200,000 a year is very real, depending on your risk. It does have to do with the strategy and it has to do with the focus and it has to do with the three components of the things we're going to talk about today, which is the thinking part, which, which is, which is not on the live day when I'm deciding. See, when I, when I get up in the morning and I'm looking at something and I am that focused, I am choosing to, to do something or not do a trade before the market opens, so I'm not in the moment of the stress of, of, of the trade itself. I'm saying, yes, this is good. I apply the system. I think it through, and that's what you learn from me as a system. I apply it without the stress of being in the trade in the pre-market, and then the doing is after the open, and then if it sets up, I just do it. And I've already decided that I want to do it because the thinking part was already done. Then the doing takes place after that. And then, boom, you make the money. And that helps with the believing too. So getting back to the whole point of this webinar, how do you achieve this consistent results and profitable results? It's thinking, doing, and believing. So believing in yourself. We'll talk about this more at the end, but this is so important. So many people do not understand really how your mind works and if you if you have one losing day you can't you can't go in a losing streak so you can't you can't just say well i'm not going to trade tomorrow because i lost today or i'm going to give up on this or give up on trading if i lost today no there's no system out there that's 100 percent winners but as you see here you can still make really good money even if a few a month don't work and so you need to be prepared for that and that's why i use stops and we will talk about that today too so the thinking part has to do with when your mind is relaxed before the open, before 9.30, and you are taking your time to think it through. So I usually get up early. I will start to scan for things around 7.30, 8 o'clock. I'd say give yourself at least one hour before the open from 8.30 to 9.30 at least to prepare, to choose to trade, to think about what you're doing, to want to, 
to go through the process and do it in a non-stressful way, okay? Allow your brain to read the chart and see everything and how the stock's moving, and then you'll be able to make normal decisions. Do I wanna do this one or do I wanna do this one, okay? So the thinking is the strategy, which is applied in the pre-market for me. That's what I do. And processing the information ahead of time before you're in the stress of actually in the trade where you have the risk on. And I do this through using a checklist that I created. It is called the Golden Gap 26 point checklist. And you just go through it and you go through and you rate everything specifically. And you go through point by point by point by point and you do it. And if the stock rates or the gap rates 20 points or more per the 26 point rating system, it's good as a short. And that is exactly what I do and what I teach people to do and what what I've been doing now for eight years. And I actually have a student that's been here with me for the last month. And it's very interesting seeing, seeing, seeing people and meeting with people and seeing them how they analyze and prepare in the morning and trade. And, and, I, and I've been mentoring him for the last month. This, this helps you get good. And it helps you to stick with your game plan, which is you're only gonna do one trade or two at the very, very most. Now, what are you thinking about when you're going through the process, when you're analyzing the whole shebang? Institutional money. So becoming a successful trader and investor, whichever you want to do, if you want to be a day trader or if you want to be an investor, it's up to you. It requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis, that's how I trade, that's what I do. We're going to look at some charts tonight. Is, is how I do it. You got to learn that. And you will learn that from me in the class. Specifically, you will learn technical analysis and gaps. And it's in the price action. You've got to comprehend how to read it so you're predicting where the move's going to go in something. And that's how you make money. You're predicting where the institutions that are moving stocks are going to sell the stock or are going to buy the stock on the live day. So we're reading the footprints of institutional money when we're taking trades. We're saying, I'm predicting ACAM or QCOM is going to go here. It's going to go and sell off on the day. Or for example, the spiders. I'm predicting that the spiders are higher, which I did predict and they continued to rally. Now here's a chart of Google. This was a couple of weeks ago. Well, no, it was one week ago. Um, this is what this chart looks like. It's being bought. Now, how do I know it's being bought? Going back at the beginning of February, the stock had earnings. It actually gapped up on the earnings, rallied, and then fell. It actually gapped down, and the next day dropped, broke, and rallied again. And the chart looks great. Now, for those of you that do not know what a gap is, I'm going to explain it to you right now. Again, this is a daily chart of Google. Down here is the day. Over here is the price. This is volume. When a stock gaps, it gaps when the closing price today is different from the opening price the next day. What does that mean? So Google closed here around 8.22 and opened the next day here at what? Around 8.15. So the stock closed here and gapped down. So this is what a gap is. A gap is where a stock closes at 4 o'clock at one price and a different price the next day at 9.30. That's it. That's all a gap is. You could have rated Google here to short. Now, I'm not going to short, you know, as a day trade a stock at this price point. It would be very expensive with a wide stop, but you could have done a put on it if the gap rated good, Okay. Anyways, this gap down. So every morning I'm looking for stocks that are gapping. And in this case here, it was Google. But you're doing this in the pre-market. You can even do it at night. Right now, there's some things that are gapping at night we can look at here if we have time when we're done. But you're learning when you read the chart to see where they're going to take it. They meaning the people that are controlling the stock. Are they going to sell it? Are they going to buy it? What are the institutions going to do? If you can determine where those institutions are going to take it, and again, it doesn't matter if you go long or short, but I prefer to short. But if you can go with that, you will be able to make money. And you get in and you get out and you get the move. And we're going to go over some one-minute charts here today as well. The idea of shorting for me is very attractive because of the fact that the moves happen so fast. And I like to be in and out of trades fast. That is my personality. I'm impatient. But there are many times where these trades do go to bigger numbers if you hold them a little longer. Even if you think something is going to one direction though, if you take it in the opposite direction, the wrong direction, you will lose money when you trade. So it's important to get the directional bias right. 
And what I focus on is in the pre-market, determining or predicting with my 26 points what institutions are going to do on the live day. Because that's what you really need to make the money if you're a day trader. Because if you're a day trader, you've got to get in and you've got to get out before 4 o'clock. Okay? So if you want to make money consistently, you have to be on the side of who is moving the stock. And preferably on the live day, unless you're doing options, okay? Now again, what's another example of power money or what it looks like? Here's one here. This is Hain. This was from the middle of February. The stock closed here, 38.50 or something, and then it gapped down here to like 33.80. The stock had a large gap down, $5 almost, and fell then on the day. So the short in this was in this taily thing here. And you would short this. And you can see here in the move, the move was a buck. So the stock had a big sell off in the gap itself. And in the morning, you wouldn't know what this was going to do. You predict it by doing the thinking part, which is analyzing what's happening in the gap. So in the morning, you're seeing the stock and it's moving. You don't see the pre market here, but it's, it's around this area 3380, 3370, 3360. And then you fig go through the points process and you figure it out. Now let's talk about the doing, which was the next step. Doing, doing, doing takes commitment. It takes a full on commitment to, to, to yourself, to the market, to the amount of money you're risking and you know, having the conviction. Okay. So you have to feel certain when you do it that the thought process is there and it works. For me, it comes with the focus for the doing because there's so many things that we're bombarded with every day. In any given day, we get umpteen emails from a million different things. You're on, you're on Twitter, you've got news sources, you might have CNBC on. I mean, you might be in three different trading rooms. Everyone has been barred with so many things. And not only that, you might have, I don't know, you know, gosh knows how many indicators on your charts when you're looking at stuff. If you don't focus, you're not going to get it right. You're not going to get it right. You're going to think, oh, well, this thing told me this. Now, this one might be good. Now, this thing told me to do this one. This thing told me the market's short. Then the, this, this other thing said the market's higher. Who do I believe? What do I do? It can't be all about that. It has to be that you know, first from the thinking part, using the strategy and the system, that the doing part is gonna be doing exactly what you thought through in the process beforehand. And you're not gonna change your mind based on something else you heard from somebody else. Again, the focus. So it's about becoming an expert so that you can do it and not allow yourself to be distracted from the other stuff. In order to become successful in the market, you have to become a specialist in one thing, one specific strategy. And for me, like I said, it's really a one directional bias. And it is because I'm looking to see who's in control of the stock on that day. Are they buying it or selling it? To me, I call that power of money. You can call it institutional money, whatever. It's momentum that comes into the stock that moves the stock in a certain direction. And you can learn how to do this. And as you do it over and over and over and over and over again, after you learn it, you get good. You get good at by doing it. You get good at the focus over and over. And I think that is something that either clicks right away for some people immediately after they come and learn from me into the class, or it could take a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Everyone has a different learning curve as far as where they're getting good. But it is definitely an, uh, an edge if you are focused on one thing and you are prepped before the open. So you think it through and then the doing comes, you're watching a certain period of time that you're taking the trains. For me, it's between 9.30 and 10. Boom, you get the move, you're up, you get out. That's it, you're done, okay? This is not long, long-term investing. This is day trading. And so you take the trade in a certain time frame that you're looking to get in, and then you get the move in your direction, which like I said, we're looking for the selling. So you get the sell off, you're up, you get out. Some days you will hold it to the target, some days you don't. I do have criteria that I look at for reversal signs, reversal times to get out. But doing one strategy, like I said, and mostly in one direction is what helps with the consistency. Number one, it limits your losses. And number two, it keeps you 
uh, uh, you know, to do the one thing that you don't get distracted by all the other things that are out there that we're bombarded with on any given day as traders. And there is a lot of those things. So as I was saying, what I do is gaps. And I did explain to you what a gap is, but we're going to go even further here. A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. This is a definition of a gap. It's a gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. That's really all a gap is. Like I said, there are things gapping tonight and we can look at some. Now, what is a gap? This was last week. It was LB. This is a 15 minute chart. What happened here? The stock closed up here. And then it gapped down here. Look at the gap. So the stock closed at 58 something, opened at 50 something. So it gapped down like $8. And then it fell. The stock was a short. Okay. So in the morning before this even happens, you don't even know. You go through the thinking process, which for me is the checklist. I go through the checklist and I check, check, check. And I total it up. And if that rates per my system to short this, you watch the stock on the live day to do it. So my system has huge opportunity because it spots really that something like, like this that sold off, that sold off huge more than $2 would go before it happens because after it happens, it's too late. Okay. Now here's what this ended up doing. <clears throat> so here was the day before. This is a daily chart. That was a 15 minute stock close to your gap down. You see the drop. Big, big drop, went to the dream target, actually broke 48. Here you have the one minute. So what the doing is what? So the thinking is knowing this is a good gap and it rated per the system, per the 26 point system. Then the doing is what? You wait for the stock to set up. The stock opens, rallies, boom, hit it. You're in, short, drop. And wherever you get out, it doesn't matter. In this case here, you can see that the straight sell off happened very, very quickly and you could have held this all along for the ride. Typical time of the day that I look to exit my trades though is right in here between 9.45 and 10. But there were some people in the trading room that did hold this longer. You just never know. You will get uh, big sell-offs many, many days later. You could lower your stop in some of these and hold it on down. But again, as I said before, I'd like to be in and out quick. Now, if you shorted the stock, we'll go back and look at it in a minute, at 5060, this is an advanced risk, $1,000 with 2,000 shares. Your profit, this is nowhere near the low of the day, but this is the first drop, would be 49.50 would be the exit. You could have made 2,200 bucks. This is real money, as I was talking about. If you do one or two of these a week, you're hitting it, okay? You're getting these. Some will be less than this. Some days you won't trade. Some days like today, you may have to take a loss. And we are going to go over the target loss here today. Anyways, boom, you're in. Take it. Put the stop. Get the drop. Again, you could have held this down, but that's up to every individual in the room because that's not something that I usually like to do hold it. But in this case, you could have. Any questions about this LB or anything I've said so far today? I'm talking, talking, talking. Let me know. Does anyone have any questions about anything so far? I'm going to keep going. Okay. Let's look at, so that was last Thursday. Friday wasn't anything. Monday, this one opened actually and fell off a planet. The first move in this, nobody I don't even think in the room got because it opened and collapsed. Now, the high, I just want to show you here, selling and power money. High in here was 26, low in here was 21 something. This, this stock fell almost $5. It was crazy, okay? Today it rallied a little bit, but this stock looks horrible here. You see it. Look at the volume on that day. This was yesterday. Now let's go back and look. So, because the first one collapsed so quickly on the one minute, you can flip to a larger time frame. This is the 15 minute. Here's the first 15 minutes of the day. That's nutty. Look at that. Absolutely ridiculous. It just collapsed. But it's good. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. If you missed the first trade in here, which I usually get, but this one just went so fast, you let it rally back. Boom. You short in here and you get the drop, and the first target you're out, but this one too kept going. 
So the first chart in this really was $23. Guess what? The stock went to 21 something. I mean, look at what it did. So price of the entry, this is the 15 minute, was 23.80. Risk, 4,000 shares or 1,200 bucks. Profit at the first target, what? $23. Again, it went to 21 something people. And if you had 4,000 shares, you could have made another four grand on this. You could have made over $7,000, more than that, actually. But, you know, it doesn't even matter at a certain point when you're up. you got to get out of the first target. And that is something we review in the trading room, too. But some people have an ability to hold these longer. For me, it's, you know, I really don't. But you can. This is a really good amount of money. There were people that did this yesterday. Some got out before 23. Some got out at 23. Some held a little bit more. This is institutional selling. This is where you want to be when you're looking at something. There was someone doing a trial in the room yesterday that went long this stock. I kind of talked about it a little bit in the room. I didn't give the person a hard time. They were there in a trial. They, they, they went long this. Why did they go long? Because they didn't understand what was happening here. This. This is the daily chart. This is how I base my decisions off of. This is how I trade. And this is the 26 points. It's showing me and telling me that this is good. And, and this is where the thinking process comes in. Then the doing process is here when you get the setup and you take it and you get out and you take the entry and you get out with the money. And all of this is combined with the purpose of, like I said, the believing, which I talked about earlier, believing that it is going to work. So that you can hit it, that you can take it. And what creates the belief is you use the system and you follow it. And you're prepared mentally in the morning with the thought processes to do it. Any questions from anyone so far? If not, I'm going to keep going. <clears throat> now, Target, okay? Target didn't work today. Target was a loser to the short side. Although, as I said earlier, it looks lower in the overall bigger picture. This had a huge collapse today in the gap. Four million shares before the open. Stock closed up here at 67. Gap down and open at 57 something in the morning. Boom. Open. It's set up in here. We're going to look at the one minute chart. Failed. Flipped. You're done. You could have done this later in the afternoon in the 15 minute if you'd wanted to but it never broke the low and never went red on the day it closed green with the topping tail but this really is still lower now what happened stock opened rallied held 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 broke boom short it you're in anywhere in here you can take it you were up in here there was a couple people in the room that actually got out of this with profit but anyways it didn't really go full on should have kept falling should have broken it didn't so you would have gotten stopped out in here or in here, wherever you got hit out. This is still lower. If you had taken this trade with an advanced risk and risked 1100 bucks, how much would you have lost? $1,100. So I do use stops. I teach people to use stops. I always tell people to use stops. If you didn't, the stock went up to 59 something, you would have been down way more. Stops also help you to have the consistency because you will be out when the stop is hit if the gap doesn't work and if it doesn't work and some days they won't work, okay? You've got to understand that some trades will be losers. So using hard stops or limit order stops helps you, again, condense your losses and keep the winners like you would have in the LB or the AFSI. Does anyone have any questions about this? So again, we can look at Target if we have time tonight. I did do a, a video on this on YouTube, but this really is lower. It just wasn't lower today. But in the overall bigger picture, it looks great. Okay. All right, now, how do you find these? People always say, how do you find gaps? You can find them on a scanner. You can find them on yahoofinance.com. Most stocks that gap have earnings, although never, not every stock that gaps has earnings. Some are news gaps. You can find gaps so many places, okay? It's not hard. What is challenging is picking the right one to do, narrowing it down and having the focus on one and then determining the directional bias, right? And then on top of that, make sure you get a good entry. Because if you don't get a good entry, then you could you can miss basically a huge percentage or portion of the move. 
like like actually this this here let me go back to the AFSI let me go back to this 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 collapsed this open here up here at 26 do you see where this even set up in here it was down more than two dollars over since that oh I just keep getting a noise can everybody hear me I don't know why I keep getting a noise I know, do I still have sound on you guys? I just keep hearing a bleepy thing. Am I still connected to Hong Kong? Hello? Hello? Hi. I keep hearing a noise. Oh, it looks like Pippi Longstocking asked a question. I don't know why that was a bleepy noise there. Maybe it's fine. Oh, okay. Um, I forget what my train of thought was here on the AFSI. Oh, if you don't know what to watch, then you miss the you miss the you miss the big momentum in here. But sometimes, even in this case here, look how it fell. You still got to catch it. So if you're watching on your scanner, like after ten o'clock, you often can lose um, or miss the move. Uh, Pippi Longstocking is asking about the selections. You notice that most of the gap stocks don't have liquid options. Any thoughts on that? I'm day trading Pippi Longstocking. I'm not doing options trades every day. The options is another way to play it with my system, but that's not what I do daily. So I don't really care about that. Every once in a while, I will do an option or call an option in the option letter or even call it in the room if it does make sense. To be honest with you, that is usually on very expensive stocks. And those do have the liquidity and they do have high volatility. For example, Amazon or, or Google. Those are the best ones. Well, I have about two people in the room. Uh, I, they just have been doing options for years. They prefer to do options and some they do then I'm doing the day trade and some they don't do because it doesn't make sense for them and then they don't do anything that day. But the system itself is designed to read the gap. You can play it as a day trade, you can play it as an option, you can play it as a swing trade, you can play it as a long-term investment, but it for the move, for the money, for the real uh, profitability here, if you want the quick cash, it really is the day trading. It is these moves here these moves that have the specific entries where you're in and out quick and you're not worrying about time value or expiration dates or any of that stuff or even getting filled because like even when I'm doing sometimes like Google you know you got to put the order out between the bid and the ass that's not how I day trade I don't throw orders out I just go boom and I press it with the hot key to fill me with a limit order uh bongi is talking about a gap right now. I'll look at it when we're done, PANW. You scalp 98% of the time. Well, I don't consider this scalping. That's interesting that Pippi Longstocking said the scalping. This, a dollar move to me isn't a scalp. What do I think is a scalp? Here, this is a scalp. Target's short move today was a scalp. You know, you could have made 500 bucks in this in five minutes, but, but why get out? So this is a scalp move to me. This is a flush. This is a sell off. This isn't a scalp. And even down to the low here, which was 23, this is not a scalp. So this to me is what I look for. This to me is a scalp. And I don't get out these moves. This is why, like I said, this was a loss for the room today, except for like, you know, two people that do scalp in the room. But you never get the big, big moves if you get out poof, right away. If you get out, every time you see a green bar, you're not going to make the big move. Because this very well could have gone to work, and I think it works tomorrow. And this is a good example, actually. The put I called in this, <clears throat> the play in target to the downside for the option trade is through the strike. It's not for the time value. It's got liquidity, but it's, it's doing it for, the, for you to get it through the strike. Albion still sees AFSI. I have target up. I have the target up. He's stuck. Oh. Is it, am I stuck here? 
There. Can everybody see Target? Oh, you were all stuck. Maybe that's what that noise was. That was weird. All right, what was I talking about? So you find gaps and you rate them and you use the checklist and they have to be qualified and the thinking process is first. You think it out. You decide to do it. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock and that's how you know how to do it and that's how you're making the money and that's how you get the conviction. Gaps happen every day. You get tons and tons of tons of gaps every day, both bullish and bearish. Someone asked about the longs. Yes, you can go long. You can use my system to go long if you want to flip it, but I don't like to do that every day. I prefer to short. And you can see why. I mean, some of these things just go so fast. But either way, whether you decide to do bullish gaps or bearish gaps and use a system either way, you're looking to get it with where the power is taking it. Okay, that's the concept. It's still the same whether you go long or short. You're still looking for the gap to follow through. You want the gap to follow through in the direction of the gap. Okay, so for in other words, I'm not going long target today, even if it fails as a down, as a short. You take the loss, you're done. Boom. Okay. You don't flip it. It's annoying when it doesn't work like today because I know that's lower tomorrow, but you can make money the next day as a follow through continuation gap or you do a put, okay? The put uh, was two weeks out, March 17th. So I use a checklist and this is the thinking. It's the thinking that tells me. The key to making profits consistently though is having all three, the thinking, the doing, and the believing, okay? So you think intellectually and process it in a relaxed state when you're not at risk, when you don't have money on the line, before the market opens and you're not in any trades, and I don't trade the pre-market or the post-market either, it's too wild, okay? So you have time to work it all out. You have time to decide how much you're risking. You have time to decide if you really like it, if you've got the conviction, if you wanna do one trade in it, two trades, if you wanna do only one thing, if you, if you like it enough, if it's got the volume. You have time, this is the process. The 26 points helps you. That's the thought process. You learn it and you use your brain to decide. Is this going to get moved with the money in the right direction? Follow through. Is it going to get the sell off? Okay. Is LB going to sell off? It gapped down eight bucks. How did I know it would continue? Selling off two, three dollars. Okay. Then you do it when it sets up and you don't question it. You learn the entries in the class with me. It sets up, you do it. If it doesn't set up, you don't do it. Sometimes a gap will open and set up and, and sometimes it will not set up. So you have to know what is the correct entry or not. But it's all about learning what buying looks like. If you're going to go long or selling looks like if you're going to go short, because this is all this, you can't make money doing things in the opposite direction. Again, I talked about the person that went long in the AFSI on Monday. That wasn't the right thing to do. I don't, I, that person might have made 10 cents. That's what I consider a scalp, but it is too, too hard to make money trading like that to the tune of $2,000 or $3,000 or $1,500 or $1,000 or $800 because you have to take so much size for to get a tiny dinky rinky dink move that you don't, you, without any follow through, meaning 50 cents, a dollar, $2, you have to take such an enormous size that you're so much at risk that if the trade didn't work, you'd have a big loss. So I don't trade like that. I don't scalp. I'm looking for a move. To me, a move is like a dollar or more. Or depending on the stock, it could even be 50, 60 cents. Okay. But understanding how your brain works is very, very important. We had a whole discussion about this in the room. I think it was a Monday. It's just so important to have the focus. It's what gives me the edge. And even if something like Target doesn't work today, it doesn't set me off because I know the system works. I've been doing it for so long. And I understand that a lot of day traders were trying to go long Target today for a gap fill play, but it was sold out by institutional money. And that's probably why it continues tomorrow. You've got to be with that power, the power that's moving stocks. And day traders did not move that stock really anywhere today. They moved it up a buck. So you couldn't make money as a day trade doing it going short. But the reality is that when I talk about power, it's a big flush like the AFSI, like the LB, something coming in and literally wiping out all the longs and it gets the flush of the move. And if you are doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, every week, every day, every year, and especially in one direction, which I do, your brain gets into a pattern of behavior that you think it through and you do it effortlessly, and then you believe. 
So the believing is part of the whole process to help you risk a thousand bucks or more if you want to do it. But even if you don't want to risk that, if you want to risk five hundred dollars, it's still five hundred bucks. You can still make good money with that. But you got to believe in it when you do it. And that thinking process, the system, and following it in the morning ahead of time helps you feel good about doing it and not be under stress where you are not um, stressed in the moment trying to decide what to do. Oh my goodness, do I go long target or do I short it? No, it's either short or it's not. It either sets up or it doesn't. It either works or it fails. You do it, if, you, if it sets up, you take it. If it stops, you're out. If you're up, you get out, okay? So it is easy to press the button, which is the doing part, once you know what to look for, which is the thinking. But the problem is if you don't know what to look for, you are making decisions on the live day, you haven't thought through anything, you're just doing without thinking, you believe in absolutely nothing. <laughs> when I see something, I believe and say, target's lower, boom. Or I believe in something and say, LB's lower, boom. If you don't know before it goes, then you don't believe either way. And how can you take any risk at all? How can you risk a buck? Do you know what I'm saying, people? I don't know if this is coming across, but it is very, very important and a big part of one of the reasons why I'm successful and I'm successful directing people too, because you have to get this in your head right, in your mind. You need conviction to make money. This is the belief. This is the belief system. If you want to trade effectively, you cannot go with a crowd of day traders, and most of them are making decisions in the spare of the moment. They are not prepped before the open, at least not as long as prepped as I take, an hour before or ahead of time, or even in the night before. They're not prepped, they go with the crowd, they would do a, a, a trade, like target, they would go short it, then they would flip it and go long it. I don't do that. I don't teach people to do that. Again, it either works in the gap correctly for the rating system, or it doesn't, in the direction of the gap always. So going with the crowd means that you will have the results of the crowd and the results of the crowd, as many of you know, stink, okay? They stink, stink, stink. You've got to think of yourself as someone different, someone that is going to stand out, like this guy here. He's amazing, and he's very, very happy. It stinks when he has to take a loss, like a day like today in Target, but he's very happy when he makes three grand in a trade, and overall he's winning at week after week, as you saw the results at the beginning of the seminar and you go with it. You think it, you do it, you believe in it, you process it, and you move forward. Because you can't be like the crowd, because the crowd, for the most part, is, are, are whinies, whiny losers, okay? Now, anyone have any questions? We may have some time here at the end to look at some, some things tonight. So, I called the market very well, continue to make new highs. I don't know where we go tomorrow. We were a little bit red here under the close today, but I did call this very well. Um, and my edge in reading gaps is one of the reasons I was able to call this market higher. In fact, if you look back here, the market has gapped up literally almost every day in the whole month of February. So we gapped up here. This is the beginning of February. Gap down, gapped up, gap down, rally, gapped up, neutral, rally, gap up, rally, gap up, rally, gap up, rally, gap up, rally, gap neutral, rally, gap up, gap down, rally. We rallied. This is a, actually, I didn't clip this for the end of the month, but. We rallied or gapped up almost every day in the month of February. That's insane, people. That is institutional money moving the market higher. You can't even question that. And there were people that were short the market in here that got stopped. There were people that were short the market in here that got stopped. I think there was people that were even short the market one day last week, I forget the day. And then we moved up higher again. I don't know where we go tomorrow. Every day is touch and go. We have to read the market now because we're so just up, up, up. But I will tell you that this was hard to read. I did it very well. Many people didn't think we were going to continue higher. Friday, I called the market higher, and that was a crazy call because we gapped down and we had been up for so many days. We could have fell and we didn't. You've got to understand what's going on here. The market's getting bought. And if the market's getting bought, you're not going to make money shorting this or anything that looked like this. In this case here, this is a chart of the QQQs. But you could have done bullish caps the market. Someone said about going long, you could have gone long the market. <laughs> you could have gone long the market in options and swing trades and in the gaps. Opportunity sets up daily in gaps. You've got to look for it. Again, I prefer too short. 
Now, this was an option. Someone was saying about options. Here was a good one. This was back from before a while ago. Oops. Um, this was one here, just a quickie, just a quick, quick one that worked like in two days, okay? You could have bought it. This is the price of the option at 2.75 and sold it. You could have actually sold it at six, but the entry I gave for the room and everybody was four because it was in the morning with the day trades. So you could have made 1.25. And this is a good trade. 650 bucks if you risk 1375 and you actually could have made more if you held it. But again, if you're up and you're in an option trade and you're day trading the same day, which this was, is a lot going on because usually the volatility and these happens between 9:30 and 10 as well. The same time as the day trades. So you can go long bullish gaps and you can make money doing them. But mostly like I said the options we do are the the with the volatility, the target put is through the strike and so every penny through the strike in the put and target you're going to make money any questions so far with anything here any questions so you move forward when you know what to do that's how you earn the money okay knowing how to do it helps you to do it and then once you make money it helps you believe okay so my strategy is called golden gaps. I've been saying this all the whole time here. It, it, it's one of the reasons that it makes it possible for people to trade because it would be very challenging, I think, to trend trade and make any substantial profits, particularly the way the market is so volatile. I think years and years ago when the market was in a very bullish trend, like in the 1990s, it was easier. But, you know, you really got to know what you're doing anymore if you're trading particularly for day trading. You gotta read stuff right. You gotta know how to read charts. You gotta have your pick ahead of time. You got You can't overtrade. And if you want to consistently make a lot of money in the market, the only way that will happen is you're trading with a focus. And I think it's important to use one strategy and you have to have all these three things in place. You think it through, you're prepped ahead of time, you do it in the live day when it sets up and you believe that it's gonna work. You don't have a negative attitude. Having a negative attitude doesn't help you and it doesn't help you succeed. So what do I teach in my course? It's this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. The course teaches you price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. And you will learn that from me. I have people that have been with me for the year that are still learning. They're making money with me, but they're still learning every day. I teach the strategy. I prefer to short. I teach you how to read support and resistance in the right direction, mind you. I teach a proficient and advanced way to read charts. It's focused on technical analysis and gaps. And I teach you how to get conviction in your trading and the market and the idea that you can actually do this and you can make money and you can do it consistently. And it's not about having huge wins and you can have a lot of losers, but you will have some. And as I looked out at the results, it's okay. You still make money if you have a couple losers in a month. So you still hold the conviction and the belief system and you follow the system every day, you do the prep work and you do it. You can't allow fear and negativity to play a factor in your trading. One of the reasons I also like apps is because they set up so fast. Again, some of these things follow through. You could have shorted target later in the day today, but it didn't have a big move. And I like to be in and out quick. So if you want to do this, you can, you can do it from home. You can be anywhere in the world. You don't have to live in the US. Time zone I focus on is between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time for the setups. That's when the market opens at 9.30. It is about chunking it out when you're day trading, 500, 600, 200, 1,000, 300, 2,000, whatever. You're in, you're out. Whether you're doing the options or the day trades, you chunk it out, and that's how you pull together the profits. You won't get home runs in every trade that you take. You can't have a lot of losers. You gotta be there every day to see what's good. You don't know. Something could be good tomorrow morning, and we won't know until we get up and see it. There might be nothing good tonight, it might be tomorrow morning. It is about having the 100% conviction, the belief system. You have to have the belief system in the strategy. You have to have the belief system in the market. You have to have a belief system, and this is very important, I'm gonna say this. You have to have a belief system that there's a, there's a reason that something is happening, that you can predict, that there's a predictability about it, that you can do it. And you're not put off with the fact that one doesn't work, like today. I know that's gonna to go tomorrow target and actually the market probably breaks tomorrow i'm not saying it does for sure yet because i don't know where we gap in the morning but that will probably help that go as well so empower yourself to trade today the class is called the golden gap course 
And I teach it this weekend. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. Once you sign up for the class, you can do it. You can be anywhere in the world. The class is online. And again, it's this weekend from 9 to 5. It's a bearish class. The cost of the class is $49.99. Email me if you want to sign up. If you want to try out of the trading room this week, email me at melissa.stockswish.com. You'll be in the room Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Three days left. March 1st is tomorrow. It's hard to believe. I already believe it's March already. And this was a testimonial from a student. He, this was a testimonial from him. He was a dollar eight away from making his goal. This, he wrote this on Friday. I have to email him tonight where he ended up. He is a new student. He did the class, I think in January and he's doing very well. He goes by chinchilla. Does anyone have any questions for me as I'm going along here? So I'm, I'm doing a special to help people this week for the March class. Starting tonight, you can sign up Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday's the last day. As I talk to people, as I'm helping people, again, I have a student here, and then the feedback I get from the room, it seems that no matter what level people are on, whether they are uh, a new trader, completely new, or whether they've been trading for years but new to GAPS, that people really feel like they need or want the support system of the trading room. So I'm offering the trading room free to the rest of the year for anyone that signs up for the class in March this weekend. That is a long time and a lot of time for you to be in the room and get my calls. Like all the calls I listed that I just went back and listed at the beginning. I, I know that the room is a support system for people. You still have to listen to what I say you still have to go through it and I think rate the gaps yourself. Think it through yourself, do it yourself. Obviously you're pressing the buttons and also get out. And you also have to believe that will determine along with your account size, your risk. But you know, I've been doing this for a while and it really feels like the best thing I could do to help people is have the support system of the live room. And the room's had a great month. I mean, even with Target losing today, it's been a good month for the room. So you've got to believe in yourself to get things done and to do it. Any questions from anyone at all? Any questions? If you want a trial, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can email me at info. Anyone want to go over anything? Now I'm going to look here at, let me just pull up my charts. I'll look here at the WTW was the one watch I had, but I think it's gapping up. Write any questions you have in the room. We're going to look at some live gaps here tonight and we'll look at the spiders here too. Oh, something's up tonight. The market is up tonight. Something's up tonight that's moving the market up. Does anybody know? There's something up tonight that's moving the market up. We just got a pop here because we, we didn't close like this when I looked at this at four. Can everybody see the charts? Oh gosh, we might be higher tomorrow. This is craziness. Let me look at the cues. Mm, maybe we won't pull in tomorrow. We may hold again. Something is giving this market a pop. State of the Union, he's not talking yet. He's not talking at 8, 9 o'clock or whatever. He's not on. Smith said State of the Union, maybe, but it's not election night. It wouldn't happen before. No, I, I don't. I mean, there's no, it's, he didn't talk yet. Hmm. All right, let's look at WTW. This I do not like. I don't like it at all. It's kind of a bust for me here. I wouldn't go long and I wouldn't short it. What was the other one? P-A-N-W. I don't think there's anticipation of him saying something tonight that would create the market gapping up like that. Might be after the speech for tomorrow morning if there's a positive sentiment. Who knows? Oh, look at this. Holy guacamoles. Oh, gosh, this is expensive, though. This is going to have a big stop. Well, here, here it is. Here. I didn't look at the daily, and I'm too tired to rate this now. It's... 5.30 and I've been talking all day, but 
Let's look at this. This is going to be wild. First of all, it's 5.30, and this could open completely different than it is at right now tomorrow morning. <laughs> Between now and 9.30 is 100 years away from where the stock could trade. Look, it just this just happened. I, what time did it report? It's too far to even look at this. 4 o'clock. It's still selling off. So at, from in the last hour and 26 minutes, the stock has collapsed through the floor of the earth. And between now and 9.30, Gush does what it can do. It could it could drop down to 115. It could rally back to 130. This is like too early to rate it. Something like this, I would just wait to look at it in the morning. But I don't know how this will rate because I don't know where it's going to be in the morning. It may not be looking like this. It may look better. It may look worse. I don't even know what this would rate like this. But even if this works here tomorrow, even if it rates good, it's going to be a wild ride. I don't know. I'm looking for something better than this tomorrow. I'll definitely rate it. I'll definitely rate it. If you're a student here tonight, you can rate it if you want to. But this does show you here the power of the gap itself. I mean, the move from the close in this to where it is at now here. Again, I didn't rate it. I don't know if it's a long or a short. I don't know what it is. I did not rate this. I'm too tired. I like to look at stuff when I'm fresh and, and have a good night's sleep in the morning. But this is something that you could rate and would rate and could rate good, I don't know. But I'm not sure where it will be tomorrow because this is wild. This could be at 110 tomorrow. That's how crazy this looks. Look, it just dropped 30 points in an hour. But this does show you the power of institutional selling because that's what you got here, people. Now, whether or not it falls through on the live day or not will determine by the rating system. And you have to see where it's at in the morning because I, I don't know. This could do anything. It could drop another 10 points. It could rally another 10 because this looks like a wild one. So that's a watch. Anybody want me to look at anything else before we go here tonight? Good class today. I hope you learned something. Uh, you know, the market's up tonight. Smith thinks it's because Trump's going to talk. I can't argue with you, Smith, that the market overall has loved Trump. Loved him. The press doesn't love him, but the market does. <laughs> so here you go. I mean, anything could happen tonight. Will I be able to sleep tonight? I can sleep every night. I can fall asleep right now. I, I never have a problem sleeping. <laughs> I can eat a piece of chocolate and fall asleep immediately. I can have caffeine in me and go, eh. Um... <laughs> You know you don't follow fundamentals, as I don't either. This is Pippi Longstocking. No, I don't. I wouldn't have time. Then I would never get any sleep. If I had to read the fundamentals or follow on that and rate the gaps and look at like five different things, ten different things in the, in the morning, I wouldn't be able to have time to do anything. Oh, Pippi Longstocking is saying he's supposed to announce budget plans and probably talk about the wall. Smith is saying it could be a leaked speech. You guys must be on Twitter because I can't see any of that right now because I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't know if that's that's true or false. <laughs> I don't know. Let's 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 just go with it. Let's get up in the morning and rate the gap. Steve is saying, what's your risk to reward ratio for a typical trade? My goal in every trade is three, but I don't hold every trade to three, and not every trade goes to three. And if your risk on the day and your goal is in and it's not a three R risk then you get out at your goal. I'm talking about your monetary goal. I we I did a whole lecture on this with Galahad two weeks ago, whatever. And I do talk to the room about this. It's, it's not about being a piggy. When I go and look at something though, I wanna see that it has the potential to, to drop like a brick and be a 3R trade. But it by all means does not mean that I'm holding it till there. So many of these do go and end up being 3R trades, but they may take longer than 10 o'clock to hit on through. And will I be in them? No. So you have to determine your own money management, and I believe that a lot of that has to do with your personality. For me, I'm an impatient person, and I understand that about myself. And because I'm risking an advanced amount, I want to make sure I'm out and I cover. 
because if I'm up money and I'm up my goal in the day and the stock pushes back against me and we're in a bullish market, which we are, it's never over to the fat lady sings and I want to be out. More and more, the longer I trade, I'm not overly concerned about how many risk units the stock goes. And I've started to talk about that less and less. What I do believe is extremely important, I'll say this one last thing and I'll let everybody go, is getting it right a lot, getting the pick, Steve, which I do. So if I'm consistently picking the right stock to short, it doesn't matter whether it goes three R's or one R or two, it just doesn't. Because if you've got more wins and a high percentage win ratio, like 84%, like I showed you earlier, it doesn't matter if it goes three R's or two R's or one and a half or a half. If you don't have the many losers and you're winning, you should be up. And the options, I tell people to kill them at half loss. They usually run into the money right away or you kill him with a half lot. We can talk about that more later. All right, good, good talk tonight. Have a good night. Stay up all night and watch Trump. <laughs> I don't know what happens to PNW. This was a crazy one. And now who even knows because of Trump and the talk in the market? Who knows? Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. WTW is a bust. PNW is a watch. Email me if you want a trial. If you're interested in the class, email me. If you have questions, email me. And I'll see everybody when I see you. Have a good night. You're welcome.